Jody Peterson. Hi, thank you so much for coming tonight. So my story is different than what you've heard. Um, my story came um, unexpectedly. Well, actually, I don't think anyone expects these stories, quite honestly. But um, my mom did get sick in 2008, and seven and a half months later, she died. And a year after that, I got a phone call from my sister, um, my older sister who lives in Santa Monica. And she said, Jody, something's wrong with dad. I need you to go home. She was on a plane to London. And so I got on a plane and I flew back to California. I took a cab to my family home. I walked in the front door. I called for my dad because usually he would be waiting for me and he wasn't there. I walked into his bedroom and he was sitting on a chair in his jammies and he was rocking back and forth and he was rubbing his head. And I walked up to him and I sat in the chair right in front of him and I said, hi dad, are you okay? And he wasn't okay. Um, there was something really wrong and he was asking if I could help him kill himself. And I'm the youngest of three daughters and my father was my hero my whole life. He was an amazing father, husband, businessman, community leader. He gave so much to so many people and I didn't understand what was going on. And I said, why? why? And he said, because I'm a burden. I'm going to ruin your girls' lives. I've screwed everything up. I have no money. I'm going to be homeless. I was like, no, Dad, you're fine. Everything's okay. And he, he got really mad at me, and he said it wasn't okay, and that nothing was ever going to be okay again, and I, as his youngest daughter, needed to help him end his life. I needed to go get a gun for him, and he wanted to kill himself, and he wanted me to help him. And I really, in that moment, kind of was struggling with, okay, if my mom was alive, what would she do? I thought she would probably make him lunch. We're Jewish. <laughs> we go to the kitchen. So I went to the kitchen and I made my mother's chicken salad sandwich exactly how she would have made it for my dad. And you had to really cut the chicken up small and the onion had to be sliced very, very thin. And so did the celery and just a little bit of mayonnaise on a nice piece of sourdough bread with iceberg lettuce, and that's how you make a chicken salad sandwich for my dad. So I got it all prepared, and I put it on the plate, and I took it to the table where we'd eaten breakfast for years together as a family, and I went and I got my dad. And I said, Dad, I made you a chicken salad sandwich, and I would like you to come eat it with me. And he said, why don't you understand, Jody? I will never eat again. I will never be hungry again. I don't want to be alive. And I said, I, I understand, but if you would just come and have lunch with me, we can talk about it. And I took his hand and I walked him into the kitchen. And I put the plate in front of him, but he refused to pick up the sandwich. And at a certain point, I started to really depend on him eating the sandwich. I thought it was going to save us. And so I picked the sandwich up and I started crying and I said, Dad, please, please take a bite of this sandwich. And he took it from my hands very angrily and he took a bite out of that sandwich and he chewed and he chewed and he chewed and then he looked up at me and he said, sweetie, could you get me some pickles? So that was a good moment. We didn't have a lot more of those in the next seven years. What I learned after that day, I learned that my father had suffered from mental illness my entire life. And because of the time and because of who he was, my mother hid it from everyone, including her three girls. She suffered in silence, he suffered in silence, and she saved his life again and again. He would go away to get treatment. He had severe depression. And 
three different times in his lifetime we learned that he had to go away and then eventually she got him back for us. We thought it was always business, but it wasn't. It was mental health. And so we were ill-prepared as three daughters once my mother died. How do we save our dad this time? And so we began this journey. And my father was very wealthy. He was very successful. He had extended health care. He had a beautiful home. He had three daughters who loved him. And we fought every day to try and get him better. And we got him into a geriatric psychiatric ward at UCLA. We got him the best treatment possible. He went through electroshock therapy a few times. Every now and then it would work. And then you'd go away again. But we'd keep trying. And we keep trying. And we kept failing. And the system kind of kept failing. And the stories kept changing and the locations kept changing, and the caregivers kept lying, and it was a brutal cycle. Um, but, but you do what you can for the man who gave you life and who loved you and took care of you, and so we were never giving up on him. Um, two years ago, he died um, from his disease, and um, it was really hard, and I miss actually caring for him. I miss his disease because it made me useful. And I also learned a great deal because I loved him so much. I figured out how do I, how do I help my father? And as a family member who has someone who suffers from mental illness, we are not the medication. We are not the cure. We are not the treatment. We are the support. And so we have to figure out what brings them feeling love, feeling calm, feeling safe feeling accepted. And so I spent a lot of time figuring out what that was. Sometimes it was rubbing his leg for four hours. Sometimes it was just making one of my mom's recipes. Sometimes it was following a story that made no sense and just living it with him. But we figured some stuff out. And when my dad died, it's like I had all of this information. He had taught me so much in such a different way. And I had been working with Interface Sanctuary for years. And in the time that my dad got sick, this tent city grew up behind the shelter that I served. And there was a group of people living in tents that were homeless that weren't being served by anybody. And one day I decided to walk back there after I'd lost my dad. And I met the people who were living in Cooper Court. And guess what? They all looked like my dad. Their eyes were telling the same story that my, eye, that my dad's eyes told me. They had no money, they had no family, they had no home, they had no health insurance, and they had no place to live or receive treatment. And all of us are asking them, why aren't you getting better? Why aren't you getting a house? Why aren't you getting a job? And it's because there's no possible way they can until someone supports them and helps lift them back up. And so the moral of my story is, the, the struggle that my family went through, the lessons that my father taught, the people in Cooper Court changed my life forever. And now I am a director at Interface Sanctuary Homeless Shelter. I co-direct with a dear man that I've worked with for years named Dan Alt. And we work together to give these people a family and a support system and case management. And we are their sons and daughters and aunts and uncles, and we are their family until we can get them either back to their family or back to health. So everyone has a story. Listen and love unconditionally, and it's, it'll help anyone who needs it. Thank you.